Hey guys, still here and welcome to this Transport Fever 2 tutorial. Today we're looking at signals. How do you use them, what are they good for, and why do you want them on your tracks? What I have right here is a small map, and I'm transporting passengers from uh, Clitheroe to New Romney. It's a single train line, and if you're starting out early game, this might be enough. But soon enough, you're going to want to either have much bigger trains, or you want to have more frequent trains. And if you have just one single track like I do, that is not quite going to work. Because you're going to be facing uh, the problem that there can only be one train on the tracks going in one direction. So you're basically stuck with one train. That's going to be the problem. And that is something that signals can help for you. Or rather, the signals can fix. I'm going to pause the game. I'm going to go into the track system. And I'm first going to be building a second set of tracks coming from this station. I'm going to make those line up pretty nicely to the other ones. Whether that's on the left or the right side does really not matter. I'm going to draw a whole second track. And let the game just perfectly clip those right next to my initial track. Almost there. Okay, here we are. Make sure you line those up, and there, done. Now, the train might already take the new track, but it doesn't really have any need to. This second track doesn't really serve any function. It's not going to make the train go any faster. It's not really going to help anybody. If I were to add a second track or a second train to these tracks, we would still see problems. Uh, let's make it uh, two. There you go. All right, so now we have a couple of trains running on these tracks, but there's a problem. The train won't leave the depot. You can sit, see it sitting right here. It won't leave the depot because the whole train line is occupied. That's because currently um, Transport Fever says, OK, look, we got one huge section of tracks. If we subdivide this into sections of track, that's going to make it far easier. And that's what you want to achieve. So once again, into the train development tool, Instead of tracks, you go to the second tab, signals. Here you got the path signal, used as a normal path signal to regulate traffic or as a one-way uh, signal. I usually just use them in the standard way, not really the one-way, although you could do this if you really want to. And I start setting up signals. Now, I usually have my trains on the right track going one way and on the right track going then the other way. So the way that I would do this is, um, in this case, just before the station, I would set up a signal so that a train is forced to wait here before it's able to enter the station. Otherwise, there will be another train that cannot depart. I'm also going to do this in a couple of intermittent sections. Because the way that the game functions is that you have these train signals and the game says, OK, if you have a signal like this, then this is a separate section of track. It's like it clears that section of track so that if there is no train on here, the train that is waiting behind this signal gets a green sign and gets to go forward. The more of these signals you have, the more smoothly a railways will operate. Let me illustrate. Right now I have a couple of sections of track and uh, on top of everything we still have to wait for this train to get to the right side of the tracks. Because the game by now has uh, figured out that this train is actually not really on the right side of the tracks. But it was here and the route was changed after. So right now it doesn't really have any way out. As a sort of stopgap measure I'm going to quickly lay a bit of track so that it can switch to the other side. And that way at least the other trains can also start going. So this one fixes it, goes to the other side. And now we should have our other train depart. This train is now moving, and the other train is still waiting. That's because this train is still occupying the section of track from the depot to the first section of the signals. But watch what happens when this one clears this signal. The signal goes red. The signal says, sorry, you cannot pass. There is no um, passage beyond this point because there is another train. However, at least this train can depart and can wait for this next section to get cleared. 
So right now, as it's moving up, this sign is currently set to green because uh, this train should be, yeah, it's just past the signal over here. You don't actually see these as a stop sign because it's not a, a red, yellow, green, but they just allow the next section to move. Now I've set up three trains on this route. One of them over here is uh, well on its way to reach the station. The second one is over here and will not continue. That's because I've only set up these double signals until this point. And you can see them uh, highlighted on the map like this, these little stop signs. The problem is that over here, train two is still occupying the rest of the section of track. So from over here, all the way to that station is considered one large section. And as long as there is even a single train on there, this sign will not turn green. The signal is going to stay stopped. So this train will have to wait indefinitely until that other train clears the first section. So until that other train happens to pass this sign, that means that this section and all the way to the other side has been cleared. That's why I always set up a lot more signals. Because if I start adding another couple over here, you're going to see that, uh, where is it hiding? Here it is. This train will now start moving again because it has another green section, which is the part to here. And I just keep putting down more signals. How many you do is up to you. If you really wanted to, you could do it like this. Uh, is it useful? Mm, probably not, because a train wouldn't really fit between any of these signals. So I just usually space it out every couple, well, I guess they're kilometers in game. And by doing that, you should have enough of the signals. When deleting signals, take care that you're looking at a 3000 deletion point, 3000 cost. Otherwise you might be deleting track, which could cause of course, all other sorts of issues. Now this is one way to use the tracks, but there are of course other ways. Let's say that I don't only have this line, but I also have another line. I have the uh, New Romney oil refinery, and that's shipping to, um, well, here, for example, the oil well is shipping to the refinery. So for that, I would set up a couple of tracks. Uh, in this case, I would probably go with a standard cargo station because it lines up with the road properly. And let's just change that a little like that. And a little like this. There you go. All right, this is only going to be one train. I'm not going to set up the double signals or the double tracks as I've just explained that previously. So this one is just going to go right here. Now I could um, use the signals that are over here. These are the ones that I placed down previous, the uh, new Romney signal 10 and 7. But I actually don't want my passenger train to have to wait ever. So I'm going to delete these. And for this small section of track, this little, well, quite literal crossroads, I want to make sure that the passenger train can always go and that the cargo train is always going to have to wait. For that, I'm going to set up one sign over here and one sign over there. Since it is just one track going you know, either way, it doesn't really matter. So what's going to happen now is that if a train, a cargo train coming in from the oil well over here happens to go here and a train comes in from the passenger station, the passengers get a uh, green sign. They get to move. These guys get to wait. The train that comes in here stops, then waits for the passenger train to clear and then gets to move on. So you can not only use it if you are uh, using a double track, but also if you're using a track that intersects with your already existing rail line. And by doing it like this, you can make it as efficient or as fast as possible and also indicate who has priority over the other traffic. All right, that concludes the tutorial. This is how you can use signals. Of course, you can also set these things to one way uh, by clicking either yes or no. Generally, if you have two tracks, it is uh, easy enough. If you have four, five, six, seven tracks, 
and you really want to make sure that trains always pick one side to go one way and one uh, the other uh, track to go the other way, that's when the one-way signals could come in handy. But 95% uh, of the time, one way is just set to no for me. All right, that concludes the tutorial. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments and I'll be happy to help you out. And of course, uh, have fun playing Transport Fever 2.